everyone. I'm Aoife Dooley and I'm really excited to join the National Literacy Trust to take 10 on World Mental Health Day. And I'm the author and illustrator of Frankie's World and Finding My Voice. So as I mentioned before, I'm the author of Frankie's World and Finding My Voice. And I wrote and illustrated these books. And usually that's a job that, you know, you can, if you, if, for example, if you're doing a graphic novel with your friend, um, if someone is really good at drawing, they could draw. And if someone write, likes writing, uh, they can do the writing part. Um, and I decided to do um, everything, which is a lot of work and it takes a lot of time. But I'm going to show you exactly how I made these books. Um, when you're looking at these covers as well, it looks really kind of, you know, like they're fully finished. And I, I drew them this way from the get go. And it was the first drawing I did. And I just want to say that that is absolutely not true. <laughs> Um, it takes a lot of variations to get through to really figure out what works and what looks good as well. Um, and here are some of the very, very early um, book cover designs I illustrated for Frankie's World. And they're in red and blue as well, which is what the colours I was, I was initially thinking uh, the graphic novel could be. So that's why they're there, the, the, the colours that they are in this. And then... Um, yeah, as you can see, there's like eight different covers here. I think I done maybe 20 in total um, before I got to um, the orange uh, book cover with the black school bag that uh, everyone likes. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it takes a lot of work to try and figure out what's going to work um, because the book cover is the first thing that people are going to see, right? So um, it's important that it stands out off the shelf. And these look kind of these are kind of more roughs than they are finished pieces, but um I like to bring in colour as well just to kind of make it look like they're more finished. Um and you can see I, I do like uh, drawing backgrounds as well. I'll talk a bit more about that later. You can see that in the second last cover on the bottom line. Um I really love drawing backgrounds because I think it brings uh, graphic novels alive and um just the world that you're um you're story is based in really and um these are some of the finding my voice covers these are slightly different they're they're a bit more finished this is kind of more towards the end of okay we need to decide in the color and what is she wearing now and you know um what angle is she standing at and you can actually see from these covers and the cover i actually ended up designing her hand is actually in her pocket now so it's even just little things like that where you can get advice where it's like, you know, her hand just seems to be kind of floating there. I think it would look better if it was in her pocket and she was wearing a jacket. So it's good to kind of um, collaborate with people to figure out what looks best because um, you might think something looks really good. And I think that's really important as well. But when you're um, publishing books, I think it's important. It's uh, collaborative. So uh, these covers didn't uh, make the cut, but um, I do like the purple one. And the red one, I think that kind of uh, really suits uh, Halloween. <laughs> um, and this is, I, I haven't really shown any of this stuff uh, much at all. So this is all really, really new. Um, this is the very first, um, I suppose, comic strip I made of Frankie's World. And some of this stuff actually makes it into the book. But you can tell um, it looks very, very, very different. Um, Frankie looks different. And the panels are much smaller. And yeah, as I said, it takes a lot of figuring out to kind of, you know, really get to a place where, OK, I'm really happy with this. I think this looks good and this is the way it's meant to look. And if you look at the book now, um, it looks completely different to this. So um, a lot of people, when they're making graphic novels, the first question I get asked is, oh, how long does it take? I think it takes as long as you want it to take. But I think the longer it takes sometimes the better because you have time to figure out um, if you're happy with things, how, how you want things to look. And if you're rushing that, um, you might get halfway through it and then realize, well, actually, I would, have drew, I would have drawn this a completely different way. So I think it's good to kind of start off small and do little pages like this to begin with. And that's exactly what I did when I was pitching um, Frankie's World to different publishers just to, so they could see and have an idea of what it, it could be. Um, so this was never really what it was fully going to be. I knew that this was the early stages. So just to give an idea. And um, 
the color you can see the oranges in here now so the orange has started to come in but um I haven't went with the blue yet so I haven't discovered that just yet in this kind of um in these panels and um the same with Frankie's um features and her head as well so when I was drawing Frankie I knew she was 11 year old girl and I knew that like I, I had some kind of idea of what I wanted her to look like but I had to do all different variations just to make sure that I was getting her features right because I didn't want to have her too old looking so in the first one on the top line you can see that's kind of what I went for in the end Um, I think she looks 11 12 um, and the second one, she looks more like she could be like 15. Um, and then the, the third one, she could be 14 or 13 and, and so on. So it's like the shape of her face changes her age. And I just done different variations of that and how her hair might look just to see how she might progress in like future graphic novels or how she might look as like, you know, an older teen. And that uh, this part is like one of my favorite parts, actually, because it's really fun because you just really get to figure out what your characters are going to look like, who they are. And um, well, you've kind of at this stage, hopefully figured out a bit more about their personality and then you're kind of drawn and figuring out like what they look like and, um, you know, what their interests are like, uh, you know, there's what their style is like, like Frankie, she loves rock music. So I know I, I base her style off my own style when I was that age which um, was like baggy jeans and, um, you know, the kind of jeans where when it's really heavy rain out that it just kind of goes up all the back of your leg because it's dragging on the ground. Those kind of baggy jeans and then uh, baggy jumpers, band jumpers. So a lot of Frankie's style is kind of based on my own um, and uh, that hasn't really changed, I don't think. Um, and these are um, character sheets. So this is a really rough um, sheet that I done. This is the very first one I think I done for Frankie's World, just to kind of give me an idea of who Frankie was going to be, uh, her likes, interests, um, things she doesn't like. And I'm kind of just planning this out. Now, I, I draw this on my tablet, but you can do this on paper easily and uh, draw on pencil first. And once you have like all your lines looking perfect and you're really happy with how the drawing looks, I draw over it in um, um, black pen then or like a kind of fine line pen and it will look really good. You'll get this kind of um, similar finish. And when I done this then, I was like, OK, I'm going to just uh, clean it up a bit and make it look slightly better because obviously this isn't looking like Frankie at the moment. It's just like a placeholder. So then I usually end up with something kind of like this. So you can kind of see. The brain is uh, still quite similar. I've uh, just given it a bit more personality and uh, made it look a bit more afraid because um, I think that's what's going on in Frankie's world. Uh, her brain feels like it's uh, screaming a lot of the time because she's so overwhelmed. Um, and usually when I have my line work done and I'm happy and I'm like, OK, this is this is everything now. I'm I'm, I'm happy to move on and and colour. Um, that's usually the last thing I do. And usually I end up with something looking like this. So you can see here on this one, I don't have a uh, ketchup written beside where the pencil is, but I know that I'm going to do that because I have the bit of ketchup on her top there. So it's like you're planning um, all stages as you go along. And if you have an idea, you're just kind of putting it in as you go. Um, well, that's the way I like to work. There are no rules. That's the kind of... Um, exciting part about graphic novels and comics you can kind of do whatever way works best for you and um so um here I have like Frankie's character sheet so she has like you know her name age um her height she's the smallest in her class of course and then things that she loves art pizza and rock music and things that she doesn't love school hospital and pop music and I like to do this for the main characters but I like to do this for like all the characters actually so um these are characters from the latest book finding my voice so it's big lisa and mo and big lisa is a drummer and mo is the the front man of the band so she's a singer and i really like these two characters because um i based them actually loosely on two friends i had growing up when we were in a band together and yeah i like to kind of just um think of little things that um the characters like to do so for example 
Lisa loves playing drums, loves to skate, and she collects um, keyrings from holidays, which is something that I don't know, you just wouldn't expect Lisa probably to do, but like she has a big keychain full of like different, like it could be like Spain, France, all these keyrings from different places that she's been, but like also maybe her friends and family have been. And then for Mo, I have her favorite boots. So she always has the cooler shoes. She always has the cooler style. And then she has um, a pet cat called Stevie, who we meet in the book. And uh, Frankie's actually terrified of cats and learns that she actually likes cats because Stevie is more kind of like a dog and just likes attention and to be rubbed. So Frankie is uh, pleasantly surprised. And um, I just kind of have a little bit of detail about you know, what they like and what they don't like as well. And they have very similar interests to Frankie, which I guess is why they're friends. And then Sam and Rebecca, of course, um, who are from the very first book, Frankie's World. And um, Sam loves games. Um, she's an expert. She's just really good at patterns and, you know, kind of complete a game really quick. Then she loves to read and obviously is super smart. And then we have Rebecca as well. Rebecca is probably one of my favorite characters because um, I don't know, she's just really fun and silly. And um, she's mad into horoscopes, uh, collects rubber ducks and loves cacti, like cactuses. Um, she collects them. And um, then again, I have their favorite food and f- the fun fact about them. So um, a fun fact about Sam is she loves watching nature shows. And a fun fact about Rebecca is she once saved an injured squirrel. So you can actually put in any fun fact about your character here. Um, you can say that they wrestle the bear or arm wrestle the bear. It doesn't have to be ending serious. It can be something fun as well. Um, and I really like this kind of element of writing graphic novels because um, it, it's the early stages and it's the most fun part because you're kind of gathering all the information on the characters and, you know, designing them, how they're going to look, how they're going to look together, uh, doing different activities so it starts to b- become a bit more real, I think, at this stage, uh, which is a, a lot of fun. So when I'm making um, the actual panels, that comes a bit after. That comes after I've done the character sheets and I've figured out, OK, this is how everything's going to look. And usually I'll do a rough sketch like you see on the left here, the black and white drawn. And usually I'll do a rough sketch just to kind of see where everything's going to go, how everything's going to fit in the panel. And of course, how many panels there's going to be. So there's loads of different ways of doing this. Um, some people like to write a script before and they, they'll, you know, write a script and it will have like panel one, panel two, panel three. And then sometimes um, like how I made Finding My Voice, I, I would have made Frankie's World with a script and would have drawn then um, the panels paired a script. And for this, um, for for finding my voice, I actually done it slightly differently. I illustrated and um, wrote it as I went along. And I think that gave me a bit more freedom to what the panels could be as opposed to being confined to going by the script. Um, So that's that's something that I found really helped me. um, So that might be a good tip. But when you um, are illustrating, uh, one of the really important things to know is to make sure you have space for your speech bubbles because if you don't um you're going to be really frustrated because you'll get to the end of a drawn and everything will look perfect you'll be like right i'm ready to go i'm ready to put like the text in and you will soon realize that um you have no space for a speech bubble and that is the worst thing ever so you want to make sure that you have space to do that and usually i just i put in um the speech bubbles you know that they're not always completely accurate in size but like just to give me an idea of how much space is there so if I need a bit more space I know I can put in a bigger speech bubble now a lot of people um write in the text as well like they'll hand draw the the lettering in the speech bubbles and um I didn't do that for mine I had a a friend make a font out of uh, my handwriting which I was really lucky that I was able to do that but for suggestions on how to get like the straight um uh, text in the speech bubbles, I would just use a ruler and get like a pencil and just line underneath as if you, you you're writing in a copy book. And then when you're done and you've done everything in um 
in you know your fine line pen or it's like a black pen and everything's dried you rub out the pencil then and then everything will look straight so um definitely put your speech bubbles in early on in you know when you're doing um up the roughs because it will save you a lot of uh, time and hassle later on and then so i was showing you this rough sketch this is kind of like the sketch after a rough sketch so i'm kind of going backwards here now so this is a rough sketch and um it's really funny whenever i show anyone this they're always kind of looking going what really i could do better than that and you probably could um that that is it's a uh, it's not the best but this is it it's not meant to be the best it's um actually just meant to give you an idea of what can fit in the box and what you know what looks good um you know to, you know can I change this angle here would this look better in this way this is kind of like um your space to figure out um where everything's going to go how it's going to look like before you actually get to the actual line drawing then and you can see here um not too much has changed uh the speech bubble is in a, a slightly different angle because obviously there was more text to go in there so sometimes you will need to figure stuff out as you go along but that's okay I think that's all kind of part of making graphic novels um and yeah th this one here i have um the plaster I, I decided to focus more on that then the last panel and you can see like in the sketch on the left i have the box there for the text box so i always kind of have some idea of where everything's going to go but i don't know if you can spot where i didn't plan out something in this and i only have to realize in myself looking at it so you can see on the left where i have the jellyfish and he looks so perfect there um and you know fits perfectly there but then uh, i had to put in earlier earlier that day so people knew that it was earlier in the day and it was a flashback so i had to move the jellyfish slightly and it's okay if you need to do that every now and again but um sometimes it doesn't always work but for the, this instance it did so sometimes <laughs> um and then this is a, another rough sketch as well from finding my voice and this is when they're in the main hall and the principal is talking about all the rules and Frankie is a bit overwhelmed and kind of like rules I can't talk I love talking and um I wanted to do something really fun for um this page because I just really wanted to get inside of Frankie's head and ex exactly what she was thinking because uh, I remember being in school and when a teacher was reading out the rules or anything like that like I take everything so literally so um, this is Frankie basically taking these rules so literally and um, this is the step by step basically of how I created this page and um, so I have the rough sketch and then I have a bit more of a cleaner sketch there you can see and as you can see in the, the rough sketch you, you can't even tell that's Rebecca's head but I know that that's Rebecca and I know I'm going to go in and then draw her after and it's kind of, yeah, it's like a placeholder just for you to kind of be like, okay, I know what I'm doing. And I really love getting to the uh, black outline stage. That's my favorite stage. Um, I think I'd like to do a whole graphic novel and just black and white outline because uh, I just really like how it looks. And once everything's done, then I go in and I color. And I think color is important. A lot of um, graphic novels are full color. So you'd have like all the colors like under the sun and any color you can imagine or want and for Frankie's world and finding my voice I really wanted to stick to um a smaller kind of color palette and the reason I did that is because I, I do it with all my work and I just think it looks really well I think it works really effectively and uh, the colors really pop uh particularly in this book with the yellow because I didn't use yellow in Frankie's world so I think it's um Good to try new things when you're working on um, this kind of stuff because you might surprise yourself I never thought I'd put yellow in here but it works really well and then um, for drawing bigger scenes of people um, so this is in the hall where everyone's sitting down and the principals just have to ask and everyone oh I hope you're all bright eyed and bushy tailed and of course it's first thing in the morning and nobody is unless you're a morning person and um, so here I just tried to figure out where everyone was going to go and you can actually see in the rough sketch you can see Sam there to the right and I was thinking oh I don't know if I can do that because if I put Sam here I'm going to have to go back to this page where Frankie and Rebecca are beside her and you know there's not enough space in this 
um image to do that so I just thought okay I'll take them out and I will focus more on other people in the school and uh, their classmates just to give an idea of the other characters so that's exactly what I did here and you know things don't have to be absolutely perfect you can see um in this this is, as well um you, if you look at the front row uh, the hands of the characters I'm really really bad at drawing hands like I am like catastrophically bad at drawing hands I just can't do it but this is how I draw hands now are they the most perfect hands you've ever seen no but that's okay because they're the way I draw hands and you can draw the, your hands or whatever you you find that you struggle with draw it your way and keep practicing it because it will but you'll become better and better at it now I have never got better at drawing hands because I, I I'm stubborn and I'll, I'll continue to do it in my own way because I like how it looks but um, if you do practice more and more, you will get better at those things. Um, so uh, backgrounds, like I was talking about earlier on, I absolutely love drawing backgrounds. It's one of my favorite things to do um, because I don't know, I could just um, I could just stare at a background that's really detailed for hours and try to spotlight different things in it. Uh, this background is actually a real place. It's the same street I used to walk up. Uh, going to school and uh, I just wanted it to have it from like a certain angle like um, almost like an animation where it is panning in to the story um, and with this as well a lot of people um, when they're looking at it they're looking at the houses and they're like well how come the windows all look the same how come they don't have that kind of you know cross panel where it has the white kind of you know where the windows open and I always explain then that um, there's not enough space to do that so if I was to do that um, the detail it just wouldn't look right in my style and um, so what I like to do is the further I go back the less detail I put in so almost like the, the, the further you go back it's just like a silhouette or it's like almost like a blob and um, but I think it works really well because you, it, it's like your eyesight in real life so if you're waiting at a bus stop and you see a bus coming down the road you can see what number the bus is but if the bus is really, really far away, unless you have amazing eyesight, you're not going to be able to read it. It's going to be blurry. So I kind of take the same kind of idea for graphic novels. And the further you go back, the less you can see. Um, and this is just um, a really quick uh, time lapse video of me drawing some backgrounds and trying to figure out where characters are going to sit and go in the background. And just to give you an idea of how I work. So this page was for when Frankie was writing a Get Well Soon card to her mom. So um, this uh, page was really fun to do because it was a bit different. So I uh, actually, um, this is me just figuring out now what the backgrounds are and like where, you know, Frankie, Abby and her Nana are going to go. And uh, the first panel is basically just like a card. I've just split it in half. And um, when I'm drawing backgrounds, I never really know exactly what's going to go where. I'll, I'll play around with it and I'll see what looks good and what looks right to me. And I base it off things like my own kitchen or my Nana's kitchen or, you know, things that are in my own world. And I think that really helps um, create how the books look because it's based on things that other people find familiar. Um, it could be like um, the front gate to your house. Uh, in uh, finding my voice one of the first pages there's different gates there but like these gates are very recognizable to like certain areas and where I'm from so anyone reading would be like oh I know this gate or this kind of thing so I like to kind of include different things like that in the books too and um, just to make it more personal and um, yeah that is um, that is how I create my graphic novels pretty much in a nutshell and um, I hope you enjoyed that and before I sign off, today is World Mental Health Day, so I invite you to join me to take 10. Life can be pretty busy, so taking just 10 minutes a day to relax is so important. Reading, drawing or writing can be all great ways to relax, and it doesn't have to be books. You can read anything you like, write about anything or draw whatever you want. So let's do it. You ready?